All right, let's call her up or call her down. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a video. This is going to be a fun video as always. Keeping it real here. Give you the information that you need to know if you want to improve your cycling game. My name's Harley, aka Duran Rider. Loved or hated, I tell the fucking truth when it comes to cycling tips. No one's out there is going to tell you the brutal truth you need to know. They don't care, they don't know, or both. Who knows? I watched a few vlogs about the Taiwan KOM. Just watched uh, Cycling Maven, he did one. And it was, it was great. And Maven always does a, a good show. And I, was just, I saw the footage and I saw the riders grinding out the saddle. And I'm just like, why would you go to Taiwan KOM? Which is a fantastic, beautiful climb. Not the hardest climb in the world. There's harder climbs in Thailand. Doing to on backside being one of them. But Taiwan KOM, it's legit. Why would you go there and have flatlander gearing? You, know, you see people walking their bikes. No, like, I, that, that just, that baffles me. Now, 100% kudos to anyone who goes and does it. Fantastic, great. But it really triggers me deep down. I'm thinking, I want to help you get on your bike and actually ride and enjoy it. Walking a bike at altitude in road shoes. Clop, 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 clop. Up a steep climb. Being passed by riders who are right, it's, it's embarrassing. It's, it eats your self esteem. It demasculizes a man or woman. It, it makes you feel inferior. You're walking a bike. You're pushing a 6.8 kilo or 7 kilo carbon fiber $10,000 bike up a climb. It's not like it's a pram, like it's a trolley. It's a Cannondale trolley. It's a, a factor trolley. It's a Colnago. It's a Trek. It's a, you know what I mean? If, if, it's, if you're watching my videos, you ain't pushing your bike up a hill. Because you're going to have proper gearing. All right, so that's the part, first part is triggered. Me, triggered big time. When I see people walking, I'm just like, put some proper gear. Who, who sold you your bike? Who sold you your bike? How did you? How did they let you leave the store without proper gearing? Or who sold you a bike or a setup? You're going to go to Taiwan KOM and your gears are inadequate. Why would you spend 5000 4000 10000 some bikes out there say are fifteen thousand dollar bikes. Why would you spend that much money on a bike only for the gear ratios to let you down? When in fact, if you just picked up a cassette like that, put it on your back of your bike, or these chain rings, this one here. This is like you get on these for maybe 30, 40, 50, I don't know what the cost. Absolute black oval ring. Alright? This is a 30 ring. If, if you run Shimano 11 speed cranks, this will bolt straight on there. This will take you maybe five minutes, ten minutes to install. You know what I mean? This is the game changer right here. This is a 30 tooth. There's 30 teeth on here. And if you've got a 32 at the back, all of a sudden, you, you're doing better. You know? I saw people grinding. I went on a Strava. I stalked people. Let's be honest. There's maybe five people in the world who do the KOM who are really just smashing up the mountain. 30 k an hour average. 31 k an hour average. They probably don't need this. But for all the rest of us who aren't on EPO or whatever, or just, you know, who are more mortals, this sort of chain ring helps you have better cadence, all right? So this is some absolute black. If you see my bike here, that's a 7.2 kilo Chinese carbon fiber bike that probably total cost me, with different wheels, maybe 1,200 bucks to make USD. The whole bike. It's a second-hand Shimano group set on there. I put it up budget personally. Yeah, I've got money, but I, I love these little project bikes. You know, it's custom painted. It's more my bike. It's my brand. Made by the same factory who makes, I can't say who makes. You know what I mean? This, this bike here is faster than the latest Trekamonda SLR disc, 100%. It's lighter. It's got to climb better. You don't have the discs rubbing. Ding, 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 ding. I was riding my $12,000 SUX yesterday. Ding, 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 ding. Pads. Oh, crazy. Anyway, and disc brakes. People using disc brakes in the Taiwan KOM or the Internon Challenge. What? You're going uphill. It's an uphill race, man. The latest SRAM Axis group set, the red SRAM Axis Red ETAP, with discs, it's about 2,550 grams with discs. Two, two changes up front. So that's about two and a half kilos. A 10 speed BB30 SRAM Red group set is about 1,850 grams. So that's, that's 650 grams of extra weight for disc brakes. Plus the wheels, plus the, the rotors and the fluid. Like, so what? 
Why, why are people going uphill with... I don't understand. Anyway, but hey, if you enjoy disc brakes and the maintenance and the extra weight and the rubbing and the dead feel of them and they give you better braking in the wet when you're going to work on a Monday morning, get them. I rate them. They're good for that. But I do prefer cable discs. A lot easier to maintain. Um, you know what I mean? But yes, it's crazy. So you, just, you can just get your Shimano crank, put this on here like that. Boom. Bolts on. And you're good to go. Yeah, you're good to go. You're good to go. It's, it just it baffles me. It, it, I don't know. I just it, it, maybe it's just my star sign. Maybe it's my personality type. Maybe it's the the autism or the Aspergers or the <laughs> whatever I've got. But when I when I see people making silly mistakes, I, it, it just goes. Pfft. It's just a mind fuck for me. It really is a mind fuck for me. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. This is the the Tai One KOM. This is the Doi Intanon Freedom gearing right here. If you've got Shimano 11 speed cranks and you're gonna do some sort of grand fondo with climbing in the Alps or three peaks in Australia, please get an absolute black 30 chain ring on there. Please, please do that. Unless you are some 55 kilo climber who is just doing, you know, Lance Armstrong watts or Cookie Man watts or EPO watts AKA, then you don't need this stuff because you are just like motoring up the climbs. Like you're like an e-bike sort of power. But for the rest of us who are doing it full natty bra, this gearing is really great. Another option is, if you don't want to change your crank, let's say you've got SRAM, okay, you're running SRAM 10 speed. You've seen my videos, you're like, okay, Harley, I run SRAM 10 speed. Fine, get one of these derailers. This is a SRAM GX. Get one of these for maybe 30 bucks second hand. Make sure it's straight, and then get a 40 cassette in the back, and then you're good to go, you know? You've got 3440. It's like, you be passing, all the people are grinding. Now, I'm fit. I am fit as fuck. I'm 42, I'm super lean, I'm super carved up. But you'll never see me grinding gears because I'm losing performance. And I hate, I hate with a passion in life missing out because of poor equipment choices. You know, something so simple, poor footwear, poor nutrition. Let's bring up the carbohydrates. This is sugar. This is sugar here. And people are like so triggered by sugar. You know, I don't have sugar. I even saw in Maven's video. Oh, Maven, do low carb. It's like, I don't think... Being nice, I don't think Maven needs more bacon. I could be wrong. I'm not. But I could be wrong. I'm not. But Maven doesn't need more bacon. He'll, he'll admit that himself. That's not be trash enough. That's just honest. I could get Maven to maybe, he's a bit shorter than me. I could get him to maybe 65 kilos. Maybe 60 kilos. All right? And I'll be doing it on a high sugar, super low fat, vegan, high carb, unlimited calories for the win. But here's the thing is, is people... You know, we'll do these races or events or, you know, and just miss out on carbohydrate. And it's crazy. You won't see Chris Froome missing out on carbohydrate. Chris Froome's on the, on the game. He's, this Chris Froome would eat this in one day in the Tour de France. One day. Look at the data they put out from SIS Nutrition. SIS Nutrition is basically a sugar company putting out product with sugar. Sugar is fuel in the body. Refined sugar is what the, the cells live on. Glucose. Well, it's not really refined sugar. It's a simple sugar, but... If this is refined, this is, contains glucose. Your body doesn't differentiate, your cells don't differentiate between a refined sugar product and sugar from rice or fruit. It is, look under a microscope at glucose. Sugar, fruit, cane, rice, it's all the same molecule, all right? So you put it in, your muscle glycogen gets restored, you have working glucose for the muscles, glucose-derived ATP, glucose-induced phagocytosis, the phagocytes, which are glucose-fueled immune system little friend helper the human body runs on glucose the human immune system runs on glucose all right the human immune system runs on sugar people say cancer feeds run by sugar it's like so does the immune system so what are you gonna do it's like saying oh the drug cartels run on money oh let's stop using money <laughs> it's like what oh the cancer cells run on sugar it's like yeah so does the eye cells the brain cells the heart cells your dick cells your everything cells your nub cells your, your immune system runs on sugar so to, to cut out sugar, glucose, and or fructose, it's just, it's just fucking <clears throat> dumb. It's stupid. It's like saying, you know, to get rid of criminals, criminals drink water. And without water, the criminals would die. So we need to get rid of water. Yay! Water's the culprit. Let's get rid of the water. Your weak immune system's the culprit. Let's get your immune system strong by having more sugar, more carbohydrates. Carbohydrates fuel the body. It's, it's, it's like, oh, man. I, I, I just cycling has taught me so much in life and seeing people fail with improper nutrition choices not enough carbohydrate not enough water or not having proper gear ratios 
Remember in 2011 when Chris Froome and Bradley Wiggins lost the Velta, the AKA the Tour of Spain? They lost it to Kobo. Kobo had a 34-32. Watch the footage. Kobo's just spitting away from him. Froome and Wiggins, who are high-cadence riders, just grinding. Uh, they're just zigzagging. They're paper boying off the road. And literally, Kobo's gapping a man. Like, he's getting that Mandingo gap. And Froome and Wiggins are grinding. And you never, ever saw Froome and Wiggins grind ever again. What you did see is total domination in the Tour de France next year. Wiggins wouldn't even get out of the saddle. He was just track spinning, pursuit, team pursuit, hour record, just spinning up all the climbs in the TT spinning. And then Chris Froome come along, spinning. Watch all Chris Froome's attacks. His cadence is higher than anyone else. Higher than Quintana's, higher than Contador, higher than anyone else. Just spinning, rapid. It's insane. It's cadence. And you've got to have that cadence by having gear choices. But uh, yeah, we live in such a dumb society. People don't have enough sugar. They buy a bike for 15,000 bikes, 15,000 bucks or 10,000 bucks or 5,000 bucks to go into a Grand Fondo or whatever, and it doesn't even have come with the proper gears. <laughs> How does that work? How does that work, man? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like going to a nightclub trying to hook up and you're walking around with like food all over your face. It's like, and, you, and you go, I wonder why the girls didn't want to talk to me. Like, you know? It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? Like, it's just, it baffles me. And I made those mistakes. I remember in 1996, I didn't eat enough on a 100K ride, and I never made that mistake ever again. I always came prepared. Now, occasionally, yeah, I do run out of food, but it's, it's a very, very, it's maybe once every two years or whatever. The last time I ran out of sugar, hmm, you know, it's, it's very, a long time ago, a long time ago. Always have sugar with me. Because I, I hate, I hate losing time, man. And I hate having my immune system compromised. I hate having my thyroid damaged because I don't have enough carbohydrates. And that's what you see now, people having thyroid damage, especially in the keto world, low carb world, thyroid damage is very common. Anyway, I've rambled on about this video. If you want more information, grab a copy of my ebook, Carb the Fuck Up. I hate to be salesy, but seriously, it's got all the stuff in there. If you're into logic, if you're into pragmatic advice, get a copy of my book, Carb the Fuck Up, duranod.com. It's constantly updated. And anytime an update it, I give are you a free copy? It gets emailed, notified. So it's like you always got the best, inf latest information. But yeah, it's, uh, it's the things out there are so simple. Now go and watch the Taiwan KOM. Go and watch Three Peaks footage. Go and watch Do Internon footage. And you'll see every single time people walking their bikes, clip, clop, clip, clop. Or you'll see really good riders, skinny riders. They've dieted down. They've eaten good food or whatever. And they're grinding. They're just like, oh, and their cadence is 60 for the last hour. There's a segment on the Taiwan K and it's at 14 Ks, maybe takes them 50 minutes to a, one and a half hours. And I see people I know who have trained up or whatever or trained with them, and they're doing 60 RPM. 60 at altitude. You, they're losing probably 10 to 15 minutes. Imagine that. You've got to lose 10 to 15, maybe even up to 30 minutes if you totally cramp up. In a race, an uphill race, just because you didn't have a little, a little chain like this, you know? Or you didn't have a dollar's worth of sugar on board. It, <laughs> all that training, all that travel, all that fucking around the airports, bringing your bike on, checking it in, accommodation, getting through, all of that. And this could have saved so much embarrassment. I don't know. Anyway, that's my opinion. It's strong. It's welcomed. It's unwelcomed. Why? Grind, why be hungry? Stupid.